All right, so this video will be covering the Aladdin Sky Atlas, what it is, how it's used, and what we can glean from it information-wise. So the first thing that we're going to cover is really just how to get to the Aladdin Sky Atlas and sort of what it is. So the first thing, like everything else that we've downloaded off the internet, you're just going to Google it. Aladdin Sky Atlas, here it is, it's the top option. Um, you're just going to click into it, and this is what the page that you're going to come to. You kind of have two options here. You can either download the desktop version or go with the light version, and it turns out for what we're doing, the light version is just fine. So that's what I would click on if I were you. Um, you can download it if you prefer that that way. It works just as well. It might be a little bit different, but um, the light version is really easy to use, um, and it's the one that I would use personally. So let's just talk about what Aladdin is real quick just first. So Aladdin Sky Atlas. Being a sky atlas, it's basically a giant map of the sky that shows the stars, wherever they are. It has their coordinates, it shows where they are, sort of what they look like in the sky. So that becomes important when we're trying to identify our star from our pictures, because we don't necessarily know what it'll look like. And so that becomes a really big, important piece of our puzzle, actually, is being able to identify which star is our own. Other than that, Aladdin manages to not only map the stars, but it actually takes a lot of different missions that have been done, and it puts all of their information, it, it sort of stacks it onto the Aladdin information. We'll go in and show you that, but Aladdin can actually show you information like proper motion, it can show you magnitudes, and it uses a lot of important missions that have been done to survey to actually pull this off. So. Click on Aladdin Light and we'll just travel in with me if you'd like to. So when you first come into Aladdin Light, maybe let's do a different one. I'll just click in so that it shows me. This is what it's going to look like. Giant stars. Um, you can drag and move. And then if you scroll, scroll in, scroll out. That's how you're going to go to, you know, deeper into the space, further out. So over here you can look. There's a whole bunch of different ways to view this. That's because there's so many different missions that have been done to visualize the sky. So some have been done in different filters. They've been done, you know, measuring different pieces of information. So it's a huge, it's amazing. Really, it is an awesome, awesome thing that we have to be able to do this. So let me zoom out here again. So the first thing when you get here probably is you're going to have your coordinates from the, um, from the WDS catalog. Because you're going to want to be looking for your star here. So let's just pull that up. Let's just search that again, you know, like we would. We go to the WDS catalog, we're going in, we're just going to click on a certain hour section, we're going to go here, let's go to my star that I've done before. So, you're going to go, you're going to find your star, and we're going to get its coordinates. So, 00382 plus 0305, that's my star that I did my research on recently. So, if I come in here, I'm just going to highlight it so that we can all see it. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to get the information for the star over here in the coordinates column so that you can be able to search it. And you're going to break it up into twos. So this number here would be 00 space 38 space 12. So if we go back to my Aladdin light, I'm going to do 00 space 38 space 12. And then I'm going to do a plus sign. I don't need to include the decimals. If I, can, if I want to, I can. Let's include them just so you can see that it works. You don't have to, though. Then you'll hit plus, and then you'll do the other set of information, which is 0, 03. 0, 03, you're going to do a space. 0, 05. Do a space. And then it's 24.6. Once again, you could leave it at 24, but what the heck, let's put them in. So once I do that and I hit enter, it's going to send me, and it's pinpointed my star. That's what that little purple finder is, is that says that's your star. So as I zoom in, I'm going to come to it. So this is what the field of view would look like in my image. So when I take a picture with the telescope, it's going to have basically a square cutout showing me this area, which is really cool because when you get your images from the telescope, you're not going to be able to know, you know, is this my star? Is this my star pair? Is this my star pair? It gets kind of hard. But by using Aladdin, we can actually pinpoint which star is ours. So I know that this star here is my my main star, and then the, its closest star is its component star. So now when I go into Astro Image J, I'm making my measurements for my research. I know what stars are mine. More importantly than that, once you've made your measurements, you're going to be trying to attempt to decide whether a system is physical. So whether these two stars are physically related. And there's a lot of information that we can gain from Aladdin that will help us with that. So to be able to do that, we're going to come over here to Catalogs, and we're going to click on the Gaia Catalog. 
So Gaia was a mission that went out, and its goal was to identify the proper motions of all the stars that it could get to in its time. And so once I've clicked on the Gaia, you can see all these blue squares around things. Anything that has a blue square has information from Gaia. So I'm going to click onto it. This is my first component star. And over here on my left, this is everything that Gaia has to offer for this star, which is amazing. It has tons of information. So the information that we're really caring about is we really care about parallax, number one, right? So parallax is going to tell us how far away our star is. So parallax is an angle that can be turned into a distance so we can know how far away it is. So here's our parallax measurement. And then also, which is amazing, is it tells us our error in our parallax. So we can create maximum and minimum distances that this star could be away from us and have error, which makes our measurement actually fairly accurate, which, which helps prove our, um, prove our measurements are good and our deductions are sound. Um, so here, important parallax, parallax error. The next thing we're going to be looking at is proper motion. So proper motion basically describes how the star is traveling in the sky. And what's important is if things are physically related, they're going to share proper motions. So proper motion here, it's broken into two components. Instead of doing it just as one, it's saying proper motion in the right ascension, and it has a number along with its error, and then proper motion declination along with its error. So notice there's error for both, which means our measurements are, if something doesn't have error, we can't really say how good of a measurement it is. But with this error, we're able to, we're able to really say how good those measurements of proper motion are, and so we can back up our claims in our papers. And the reason we've broken them into components is because otherwise we would have to have some sort of angle with respect to something, and it's much easier really to just do it in component form. And this will be the information that you'll put in your paper when you publish, or when you make your deduction. This is the sort of information that you'll use to be able to do that. So it's good to have it broken up. That's not really an issue. And then the last thing I want to point out here is this R-U-W-E. So basically, RUWE is a measure of how good these proper motion measurements were. And really what we're looking for is any RUWE less than 1.4. That means it's great. And really, even over 1.4, that's something that can be discussed and argued. But over 1.4, we're arguing it, it's been shown that those, those proper motion values may not be for a single star, or there may be issues in actually measuring them, so they're usually not good to use in research because they're, they're unsound measurements. And if that's the case, we don't really know what we're measuring. So your goal here is less than 1.4. I'm cutting a little close with 1.3, but um, it's not that bad. Then the other thing that we can get that's um, really actually kind of cool is here it tells us this photo G mean flux or photo G mean magnitude. So this is the magnitude of my star. So it says it's 10.26, so if I actually go back to my um, WDS catalog, I can look at my magnitudes of my SCAR here, 10.37, 10.26, so that's pretty close. And so that's for my first component star. So what I'm going to want to also do is I'm going to want to do it for my other star. You go in here, it's got all the same information, except for you'll notice that the proper motion in the RA, proper motion in the deck, a little bit different, so that makes me think that these two stars aren't related. RUWE here is even better, it's about 1. And if we here, go here to the magnitude, 12.9, that's basically my 13, right? So these measurements, what, what Aladdin can do with Gaia is actually kind of amazing. All of this information will be extremely useful when you're writing your paper and stating your claims about whether your system's physical, not physical, and you're trying to decide that. And one thing other we can point out is that the parallax here in the parallax error, um, we should be able to see the parallax and parallax error is quite different. So this is my component star. It's a parallax of 2, parallax of 6. That's an enormous difference when we're talking about distance away. We're, we're talking hundreds of thousands of light years here, really, between these two stars. So there's no way that they're related. So we don't even need the proper motions. The proper motions tell us the same thing but we wouldn't even need them necessarily because of how far away these two stars are. Um, so that's the important stuff that Aladdin has. So just to recap, Aladdin is just basically a sky map that has some extra information that's really helpful for us. So it can help us to find our stars when we take our images, and it can also help us to get proper motion, parallax, and magnitude information about our stars once we've taken our images and we're getting ready to analyze our data or to publish our data.
So that's what Aladdin has to offer. Really, Aladdin Light's the best way to go. Um, thank you guys for watching.